Okay, we're live. Okay, so recording is set up. You are now live on YouTube and recording. Um, you can go ahead and start whenever you're whenever you're ready. Thank you, Josh. I have not heard from anyone else that they were not able to attend. So maybe give it another thirty seconds to see if um, Kelly McConnell. Who else are we looking for? Garrett. Give him another minute just in case. All right, well, well, we'll let them join in when they get here, but um, I think it's um, just because of time and we do have back-to-back -back meetings tonight. Um, I will call this meeting to order a special board meeting for the SAU 70 at 6.01 p.m. Um, and at this time, if any members of the public would like to address the board, I'm seeing two attendees on here. Um, Catherine or uh, Linda, maybe. Um, if either of you are interested in addressing the board, uh, uh, please uh, chime in. Please use the raise your hand um, option. Um, okay, no comment. Nope, no looks comment. like we're good okay, with great. both. Excellent, thank you both for joining us. Um, then I will move on to agenda review. Does anyone have anything they'd like to uh, add into the agenda, change in the agenda at this time? Jay? Hi, John, there's a note um, on the agenda itself that says that there aren't non-public minutes from May 6th, so we can, we can strike that. Excellent, thank you, I, I did notice that. Anything else? Is everyone good with that? There weren't any, there wasn't a non-public meeting that night. Great, any, anything else anyone would like to uh, move around, change or add? Okay, then uh, moving forward, we had a request from the, um, the equity committee to, to do a, a presentation to the board. Um, and uh, Lisa, were you gonna do the presentation or, or was there someone joining us? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, um, I was emailing Julie Stevenson um, because she has our slides and was gonna lead the presentation. And she had somewhere to be right before this. And I told her we were planning on starting at 6.07 and you are way ahead of the game. So um, according, so I just texted her to we're up. Um, but let me see. Do you want to um, kind of give just kind of an intro to, you know, to maybe the public or board members that maybe aren't aware of kind of what the equity committee is and what it's doing, and then we can yes. dive deeper in once she joins us? Yes. And let me even see if I know how to share something, which I don't think I do. So I'm not even going to try. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'll just start without. Okay. This is, this is hard because we're starting with the history and I don't really know the history. So my apologies. Can I, sorry, Lisa, I'm gonna take you off for half yeah. a second. Would it make sense if we moved on to like the policy discussion and came back to this? I don't, like I don't student, know, John, Julie. I apologize for speaking out of turn. No, but. no, you're not out of turn. I think um, <laughs> if, if everyone would feel more comfortable with that, it, I, I, I guess I would throw it at Lisa, if you're more comfortable with that and waiting, um, we can definitely go through kind of the the business requiring action, which shouldn't take too long, but possibly yeah, I am. I am more comfortable waiting just again because I'm new to the committee as of like five weeks ago, and we wanted to give a historical perspective, which I feel she is most appropriate to give. So, yes, Jay. Okay. Um, Julie's trying to get in right now, oh. but she keeps getting. Uh, she's not able to get in, so I told her to go in through the public link. So I'm trying to guide her in. Can she share through the public link? She wants me to email her the link, but I'm not that techno technologically adept. Josh, are you able to get Julie Stevenson in? Yeah, I'll, uh, it'll just take me a second. I'll send her the link. And even if she joins the non-public, I can transfer her over to That's this side cool. of things. Great, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Yep. yep. Josh Malloy in air traffic control. Exactly. Um, well, then while we wait for her, um, I can start with um, who is current, well, 
I can start with who's currently on the equity committee and then we can work our way backwards, if that makes sense. Um, the equity committee currently consists of three members of the Hanover High School staff, one member of the staff of the Ray School, the Marion Cross School and um, RMS, and then four community members, one from each of the four schools in the district and then myself from the board perspective. And this is an expansion that happened about five weeks ago um, to an existing equity committee that's been around for about two years at the high school level. So um, the equity initiative began with a bunch of teachers and administrators at the high school having an interest in this topic. And they've landed to the point where we are now an SAU committee with representatives from all of the schools, um, both at the staff level and at the parent level. Um, and the idea is to make sure that the goal is to make sure that equity issues are embedded in everything that the district does um, and that the lens of equity becomes hi. one that we look at. So, hi. Hi, I'm so sorry. I don't know why it wouldn't let me in. Hi, everyone. Hi, Julie, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Hi. Okay. So, Julie, I started at the end with who the current okay. members are. And okay, that's great. Said. Great, perfect. So um, we can start with the slides. Okay, I'm gonna screen share. Is that fine with all of you? Perfect. All right, here we go, screen share. Okay, so maybe nothing will work tonight. Host has disabled attendee screen sharing. Josh, you're, you're not helping me out tonight. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> It says it's disabled. I can go without the slides if I can't. One second. Okay. He's got we'll, we'll all be broadcast engineers by the time we're done with this. I know. Thank try you, it, Josh. Try it now, Julie. See if that works. OK, great. I think it might work. So if I get to the right screen. OK. All right. So. Um, we just are here to update you on the equity committee work and the equity committee has been working at this for a few years, um, not as a Dresden school district committee, but as um, a Hanover high school group and it's expanded in the last year. Um, and we just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of everything that's going on. Um, Lisa and I are not doing the lion's share of the work. Um, there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of work. Um, we just happen to be the face of that tonight. So just so everyone is clear that um, there are a lot of people behind us and we agreed to do the presentation, but this is not our committee necessarily. It's just one that we do work on with a group of um, people. Okay, so the agenda, we just wanted to give you a quick history. I'm gonna go through really quickly. It's, I know, beautiful out. Um, and you guys don't need to be here till 11 tonight. So history goals, and then um, if you guys have questions. So mainly you saw who was on the committee, but the committee didn't start this spring. It didn't start in the crisis that we're in now um, or the one we've been in throughout history. Um, it started and surfaced at Hanover High School in 2018, 2019. Um, there were conversations that were happening around the high school um, in different pockets. Some of it was pupil service team conversations talking about, you know, do we have a disproportionate number, percentage of our students in tracked, lower tracked classes based on their socioeconomic status or based on their racial status. Um, and then I, we have, we didn't want to read all the bullet points in our slide and we'll send you our slideshow. Um, but there were different things that went on at the high school that year. Um, that, that surfaced the idea of this equity committee. Um, and so that was a couple years ago. Um, so actions that we took that year, there's a list of actions we took, um, but one of those was creating the equity committee. There's also a staff small group. Um, we had a student a students of color affinity group started. There are different dates on this that you'll see. Um, but different things happened at the high school. And towards the end of that year, the 2018-2019 school year, we started to talk about um, a potential equity audit. 
And when we were talking about that, we thought, well, why are we just doing this with the high school? It would make more sense to have a K through 12 effort. And at some point we should talk to the leadership group and see if the other schools would like to join us in this effort. Um, and as you can imagine, and I really can't remember, and I talked about it with Lisa today, was it the end of the 2019 school year, the summer or the beginning of the next school year? Um, but we talked to the leadership group and as you can imagine the leadership we have at our school um, and all the schools that we have decided that this would be a great thing to embark on together. So we expanded the equity group that was a high school group and created the Dresden Equity Planning Committee. Um, the planning committee has these goals, just so everyone's clear on them, to obtain district-wide needs assessment regarding equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, you may have, if you have students in our school, have noticed that this spring we sent out an equity audit to our students, to our parents, to our staff. We did one like that. We also, the groups within each school did the equity audit too. We had a few people in each school answer a different survey. Um, we decided to hold off on the elementary school students in terms of our equity audit because we feel like they needed someone to explain the audit and, and some of the language. I mean, there's a, there's a, um, an elementary school specific survey, but we wanted to make sure that their teachers could explain to them a little bit so that they could answer more appropriately potentially and understand the assessment. Um, we did hear from a few people of elementary school age parents that they may not have answered the survey because they thought they were supposed to wait till their kids answered the survey. And so we might do another one in the fall, um, just so you know. And then the, um, the next goal was to unpack the role that privilege, particularly race and class privilege play in our community, leverage that privilege to increase equity, increase personal and professional competence of staff around issues of power, privilege, and identity. And then the long-term goal, I think that is um, true, you know, close to our hearts is we would hope that student demographics are not predictive of student experience in the district or educational outcomes. Um, so the equity committee started at Hanover High School, turned into the Dresden Equity Committee where we added members that you saw that Lisa told you about, I'm, I don't, I'm not aware, but uh, from the different schools. And then we lived like that for most of the year until this spring in COVID, we got back the equity audit and we decided that we should add community members um, and parents from each school. And so you guys saw who those members are, um, who have expertise in the area, who have personal experience in the area and who are just interested and wanna help. So the group expanded this spring. So it's an ever changing and expanding group. Um, just, you may be curious um, of the action steps for 1920. Um, one of them was the equity audit, which I was just speaking of, and I'm gonna show you a, a few slides on CEE, the Center for Educational Equity, um, because as I am suspect of any outside group or inside group, usually you wanna know who these people are, they're doing the audit, what's their, what's their you know, reason for doing it and helping. And so I'll explain a little bit about them. Um, we have monthly small group meetings. Um, we continue to support the Student Diversity Club at the high school. Um, and those are some of the things the group has done this year. Um, and this is just a little bit about the Center for Educational Equity. They help do these assessments, the community resource map. They, um, there's a number of things you can read. Um, so I'll let you do that. It, but mainly, and when you get the slideshow later, you can read it more. Just, I think this is more of, you know, the overarching, their goals to improve and sustain the systematic, the sy systemic capacity of public education systems to address problems caused by segregation and, inequality and inequities, to increase equitable educational opportunities for all students, regardless of race, gender, religion, and national origin, and they serve people like us. The CEC, CEE provides technical assistance and training to states, districts, schools, and community-based organizations within region one um, at the request of school boards and other responsible government agencies. Um, they do all of this work for free. It's a federally funded program. You can look them up and read about them. 
This is just a slide that tells you about their levels of technical assistance that they would give schools. Um, and this is to give you just a little bit more of an overview of, oh, whoops, sorry about that. Um, what we have for groups within our schools right now, it, it, it's a little Hanover High School heavy, um, but that's, um, Lisa and I were talking about today to try to give you guys an idea. Um, we have the district equity committee that I'm just talk, I was just talking about. We also have a HHS staff equity group. We have small groups that meet monthly and we have one group that has about 35 members who look at equity from a staff perspective at the high school. Um, we had a March intensive called Exploring Whiteness, anti-racist March intensive group. Um, and they have told us a number of stories that have informed our work. We have a diversity club um, and we have HHS council that was just created subcommittee on equity and they were created as a reaction to the things that are happening now, um, that fifth group. Um, and, but the rest of it was created before that. The summer and fall 2020, where we're headed. Um, we have some data people on our committee who are gonna disaggregate the data a little bit more because when you look at the equity audit that was sent to you and sent to our parents and sent to our staff this week, it looks like things might be doing all right, right? But when you, when you take apart that data, there are certain groups that might not be. And we wanna make sure that we don't see the huge picture and miss the personal stories of people that are really suffering. And so that's the first thing we're gonna do. We are also gonna look for additional information I can tell you from the high school perspective, we can look at tracking data, we can look at discipline data. Um, and, and you know, there are, you can see differences based on socioeconomic and other things, but we're gonna have someone really crunch those numbers so we can know that, not just feel it. Um, and then PD was clear in the equity audit that we want, that's one place we can start and we can start before we even get the elementary school um, numbers in and all of that. And so um, the equity team is working on a leadership three-day PD for our leadership team. And then in our last meeting, we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if the board did it too? Um, so we may add you in on that, or we might do our own and we might create one for you if you guys are willing. Um, so that's one um, piece. And then we're at, we've asked the principals of all the schools for monthly teacher PD. Um, and I know at the high school, we're able to do that because we were doing hearts work this year and we're gonna transfer that to some of the same in, but with equity. And then um, the other schools are gonna carve out the time to do the one hour piece. And then what's still sort of in the balance is trying to figure out what to do with the K-12 time. Do we wanna give up some of that K-12 time to look specifically at curriculum um, in terms of equity. And I think the leadership group is still talking about what they feel like they can do there in terms of giving up time. And then we started parent focus groups. I don't know if any of you were in them, but we started parent focus groups this week um, where we're gathering in, um, additional information to supplement our data. Um, and then when we were talking about T to PD and we realized it takes a community to change culture and to work on culture, why not have parent PD? Um, and so we may dive into that area in terms of um, parent education. There were some notes that went out from principals um, this spring that sort of said it all, you know, it starts at home and, and you know, we need parents on board to help with this, but maybe some parents have, are struggling with how to do that. And maybe we can um, get some experts to help them figure out good ways to interact um, and help sort of in the educational process of their kids. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, Lisa and I will try to answer questions. Um, people that would really be great at answering questions that you should give a pat on the back when you see them. We've been at this a long, long time. Nicole right here and Devin um, have been amazing. And then um, we have a great reading list we got from Chris, um, who's RMS as their librarian. Um, 
and you know, just a really great group of people to be spending time with this spring um, on Zoom. So I'm gonna unshare so you guys can all look at each other and we will try our best to answer your questions. Yeah, and I'll just start by seconding. Um, I really wanna thank the high school, um, the high school in particular, but then all the schools for taking this on. Um, it's a lot, it's hard to talk about, and it's especially hard to talk about on Zoom. Um, you know, they were very brave and they invited community members to be part of their group. Mm -hmm having never had a lot, we've never had a live meeting. So we're talking about really tough stuff um, on Zoom and it's been incredible and respectful and a learning experience. And I, I do come away with ev from every meeting particularly impressed with our educators. Um, they're, you know, they're in it. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Julie. Um, you know, I think, um, a special thanks to the entire committee for this work and to both of you for kind of pulling it together tonight. We really appreciate you being here to present. Um, this time I'll open it up to questions. I see Rick's hand up, so I'll let you go first, Rick. Hey, uh, great presentation. Um, I'll start with a little story. So I was on a board of trustees call this afternoon for a school that I went to and uh, we were talking about diversity and equity and everyone on the call was a white male. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I know this is a tough problem to solve in Dresden, but are you, what is the makeup of all these different groups? Are, are we in trying to get uh, uh, some diversity on the panels and how are you dealing with the class issue? I'm, 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 do we have different, mm -hmm. different, uh, people on the on these committees that are that can actually talk about the problems they're facing I can start from the two perspectives that I know um, the diversity the district-wide diversity committee which was the thrust of most of what we presented tonight um, we're mostly white women <laughs> with a two white men um, but at least two of us are non-white and two of us are, at least three of us are parenting non-white students. Um, and I don't know about the socioeconomic part of it because we haven't asked. Um, so I, I can't speak to that, but there, there is a little bit of diversity in the makeup of the equity committee um, itself. And the parent focus groups, um, the, we've only had one um, and it was, mostly white parents, but a lot of them are parenting non-white students. And we had, pro I think we had 25 participants and I think five or six of the parents were parents of color and probably 10 were parents who are parenting either biracial kids or um, kids whose race is different than their own. So that parent group was diverse or as diverse as we can sort of get randomly. Um, one thing that came from that is we are gonna have special focus groups of parents that are more affinity group oriented. So we're gonna specifically have a focus group of parents of students of color. We're gonna specifically have a focus group of parents of color. Um, we're gonna specifically have a focus group of parents of students with disabilities and sort of go that way um, just to create to do two things. One, create a safe, a safer space for those conversations to happen, but also um, to take the onus off of the few people of color in all of these Zoom rooms to educate the rest of us. So, um, yeah. And then and I, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. And I think Julie can speak to the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's interesting um, in terms of where the conversation started in 2018 19 was a conversation I had with someone in, try, in terms of trying to start to do affinity groups um, in the school, the conversation I had about the struggle, it seemed that some of our students had whose race, race did not match that of their parents um, and, and how we were noticing a pattern there. Um, so, and then the, um, in terms of socioeconomic, which I think is, is a huge piece that we need to really dive into in this area, um, 
we have talked about, um, Nicole has done a grant, which we actually found out we couldn't pay. We were trying to think of ways that we could get focus groups where we would actually pay people a stipend to come and be part of it because we might have people who can't because they have two jobs going and maybe they would leave for <laughs> a night if they if they add a stipend and trying to do that. So we're trying to figure that out. We found out with grant money, we can't with the Title II grant money pay people to be part of these focus groups. Um, but we are figuring out another way potentially around that, um, you know, whether we raise the money, whether we put it up ourselves, whatever we need to do to make sure that we get, um, we get a, a background of parents, not just the ones that have someone who can stay at home with their kids while they show up at a, right, a Zoom meeting or a meeting or a focus group meeting that we might have. Um, so we're, we are aware of that and we're, we're trying to think of different ways that we can remedy that situation. And I just want, I, I assume there, you know, some of the funds that we have uh, that, the, uh, that Jamie manages and Jay manages, I don't know if those type of uh, payments could be made, but we may want to look at, because uh, you're right, I, I, I'm just afraid that these meetings are happening when someone is running to one job after getting off their previous job and they just don't have Mm -hmm. time and it just makes it uh, more difficult for them to actually participate and give us the ground truth of what they're dealing with. Right. Yeah. We had thought of that. We thought there was an easy answer. We're like, we'll just use this money and pay them. And we're having to scramble a little bit, but we'll, we'll scramble. We'll figure it out. We'll <laughs> definitely figure it out. Yeah. Thank you both. Any other questions from board members? Uh, Marcella. Hi, Lisa and Julie. This is such wonderful work. I just really want to thank you. Um, I didn't know about all of these efforts and even just being educated about the history of the process and all of the places you're drawing from has been really heartening. And um, I'm just excited for y'all. This is a really wonderful time. Mm -hmm. um, people are feeling motivated <laughs> to, to make change. And it's great that this is just sort of building on what you've already done. And I think that that's fantastic. I also just kind of wanted to affirm something that I feel like I'm hearing a little bit in, in, in different um, ways that you're talking about the audit and the data, which is that, um, you know, it isn't bad if all your data is good, right? Like that's, that's wonderful. And it doesn't mean there isn't work to be done still, right? Like even if all the data is great and the people looking at the data don't find trends, which I'm sure they will, because <laughs> that's how these things play out. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's any reason to stop working on these really big sort of systemic issues. And so I don't want you to feel like you have to, to prove that this is worthy work. Um, I know, I feel that what you're doing is already absolutely valuable and incredibly important. So thank you. Um, I was also really interested in um, the question you raised about curriculum and, and how, how to maybe incorporate it. And I know I've been speaking with Lisa a little bit about an initiative um, that is happening in the Lebanon School District, um, working with Jamison Davis and Ariel King from a Schweitzer uh, grant um, for anti-racism policy. But part of the grant is also developing a five through seven uh, curriculum that tries to incorporate um, anti-racism into existing models. So it's, it's all about saying, well, what are you already doing? We don't want this to be thought of as like lost time for the, the teachers or additional prep, but like how can we make small tweaks and just sort of change the perspective to incorporate like anti-racism into education? And so um, I think this is really exciting that there are so many different parts of our extended Upper Valley community that can come together possibly. Um, and there can be a lot of synergy. And um, so I think that this is just uh, wonderful. So thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to think, I was taking notes and I was just so excited while you were talking, but I think I'll just leave it there for now and, and um, follow up because this is great. Thank you so much. And, and on that point, I think um, we keep as a committee, at least for the five weeks I've been in the weekly meetings and they've been weekly, not monthly, I was noticing, um, is that, um, we keep talking about how to make this sustainable and infused um, because only by infusing it will it be sustainable. It, it has to just sort of be part of what we do. Um, and you know, so that is on the minds of a lot of 
yeah, that's definitely on the minds of the committee. And that was definitely um, first and foremost in the people who participated in the parent panel last week. Um, we heard that we heard that message from them loud and clear. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions before we move forward? I'm sure we'll we'll hear more as, as the process moves along. And again, I, Marcel, I, I wish I could have um, said what you said so eloquently. So thank you. Um, but I think you can kind of see on all the faces that I'm looking at that there's a lot of excitement around this and um, great great start to it. Thank you. And then from what I hear from Lisa, um, we will be on the agenda monthly, right, to do a report. Is that what you were telling me, Lisa? Well, I wondered if now that we're a committee, if we'll, there'll just be a chance to give like a quick update every month right. or. And you'll probably be giving that Lisa, right? Is that the, or whoever decides yeah. to show up. We'll okay. ask Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll make sure, we'll make sure there's a committee update at, at um, all of the SAU meetings. And if there is a month where there isn't, potentially it could be done at one of the others, but I would have to run that by um, the other chairs. Okay. Um, but great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. Thanks guys. Okay, moving you, ahead, we're gonna- a, I have a oh, question sorry. for yeah, Jay, yeah. just really quickly. I don't see Justin here. Do you need me to stay or can I go to the other thing I needed to go to? You can go to the other thing you need to go okay. to. Okay, <laughs> thank Great. you. Yeah, all right, thank you. Great. Nice to see all of you. Bye. Thanks, Julie. Okay, so moving into the business requiring action, we just have the two um, approval of minutes. So um, if I could get a motion to approve. I'm looking for a hand. Kelly McConnell. There we go. Move to approve the minutes of the June 9th, 2020 SAU 70 board meeting as presented. And a second. Neil, and any questions, comments, concerns? Great, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Kelly Hersey. Hersey, yes. Rick. Yes, Johnson. Neil. No, yes. Tom. And yes. Kelly McConnell. McConnell, yes. Lisa. I think I have to abstain because I wasn't there due to eighth grade vacancy. You no? do not have, no, you don't have okay. to. Then yes. Because you still have the option to read the. I read yeah. them, but I just <laughs> was sort of like, no, I don't you're know good. if I can say if they're accurate because I wasn't there. You're good, thank uh, you. Yes, I need to approve. Great, uh, Marcella. Lossie, yes. Kim. Hartman, yes. Ben. Amy, yes. And Dan? Rockmore, yes. And Hunt, yes. Excellent. And moving to approval of policies. These were, we discussed at the last, um, the last board meeting. And um, if there's anyone from the policy committee that wants to touch on any of these before we kind of move to uh, get these moving forward. Yes, Kelly. I'm not on the policy committee. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who are. I know you've been working your, your tails off, so thank you. Um, I actually just had a question about the agenda. It said that um, we're going to approve them in August, and, and my question's actually for Dresden as well. Um, are we, in fact, approving them tonight? I see this. the one has to be approved tonight. but So from what I was um, told uh, from the SAU offices was these were supposed to be in August because um, we've had the discussion, but since we had the special board meeting tonight, there were a few that we needed to get through because of training and other programming. Um, and Jay, maybe you have some further information on that? Yeah, I, I, I'm a little confused. I think that might be an error because we actually approved, we, we, t we used our prerogative to approve on a single vote the, the suicide prevention policy. So we, we just need to reaffirm that um, in this motion this evening. And the others were already, um, they already received a first reading. So I think we're approving them tonight. Okay, so at this point, would anyone like to make a motion? Rick? Move to approve policies JLDBB, GCF, GCR, BBBA, GBEBE, GBCD, and JRA as presented. And a second. Ben, great, any further discussion? Great, we'll go right around the room. Kelly Hersey. Hersey, yes. Rick? Johnson, yes. Neil. Odell, yes. Tom. Candon, yes. Kelly McConnell. McConnell, yes. Lisa. Christy, yes. 
Thank you. Marcella? Iblas, yes. Kim? Ben? Ini, yes. Dan? Rockmore, yes. And Hunt, yes. Excellent. Thank you all. Um, moving forward, reports and communications report of the chair is just that our next meeting will be Tuesday, August 18th, 2020, pending the it's not necessary to add another special board meeting. Um, but again, remind the public that that is a possibility and remind all board members to be on the lookout just in case. Um, and that would be the report of the chair. Um, superintendent's report. Great, thanks. Okay. I'll start out just by um, letting the board know that um, Ryan Schoonover is uh, replacing uh, Kate as my assistant. And she doesn't start until July 1st, but she's already had one meeting at the SAU uh, with Kate uh, to begin the transition. I spoke with her at length this morning and she's already processed in with Amy Tallman. So she's, she's ready to get going. Um, I just want everybody to be alert though, that we have a transition coming up here. And so July is gonna be a, a little bit of a get to know you and get to know all the different systems and processes. And that could be a little challenging, but we're gonna do our best to make that as, as smooth as we can. Uh, the other thing, I guess I'll, 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 I'll cheat and do half of my, um, my COVID update uh, right now. Uh, we, uh, Jamie and I had our second meeting with our nurse, nurses, uh, Michael Hensley from uh, Hanover Public Health, um, and, uh, and actually included our, our union representatives from both Norwich and Hanover uh, to, to just go over some of the things that we're keeping an eye on in terms of preparing for the start of school. And um, the conversations are always wonderful. The nurses are really being proactive from all across all of our schools. And, and working very closely with Dr. Chapman and working closely with Michael Hensley uh, to, to sort of take the lead on making sure that all those things that we need to do to be ready to, to have a safe start uh, are in place. So we covered everything from PPE and, and trying to estimate how much we're gonna need to um, how we're gonna make sure that we uh, create a survey that, that helps us get at uh, the needs of our staff and our families. We've already had a few families that have contacted us to let us know that they really can't have their child start up in the fall. Um, so we're working through that and we, uh, Jamie can chime in and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't have the date handy, but I know we're shooting for around July 15th to get a survey out. Um, like I said, both to our employees and as well as to our families to figure out what their childcare needs are likely to be and all that. Number one hang up we have right now, especially thinking about a live start is the restrictions that we're going to have on transportation. Uh, that's gonna be a really big one for us to, to work through and it'll be subject to whatever the orders are in place at the time as far as distancing and, and all that. Um, it, we, right now, I think Jamie had, had shared with me that we could have to have as many as three different runs to get our kids in. So we'll be, we'll be having to factor all that in when we start to think about how we're actually gonna to do this and stay in compliance with the rules. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there and I'll finish up uh, when we're in Dresden with the rest of what I'm hearing from the state. Great. Thank you, Jay. Sure. Um, Jamie, business is administrator's update. Yeah, I posted an updated um, end of year projection. It hasn't changed much, just a few thousand uh, from the last one, but it is posted there. I got the SAU one done. Dresden, not so much. Sorry about that. It's been crazy. And um, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email and then I'll shoot the answers out to everybody. But it hasn't changed much since last, since last we met. Excellent. Thank you, Jamie. This time I will ask for a motion to move into non-public. Rick. Move in, uh, move to enter non-public session under RSA 91-8 colon three, two. And a second, Ben. And we will go right around with Kelly Hersey. Hersey, yes. <clears throat> Rick. Johnson, yes. Neil. Odell, yes. Tom. Chandon, yes. Kelly McConnell. McConnell, yes. Marcella. Iblasi, yes. Kim. Hartman, yes. Ben. Eni, yes. Dan. Rockmore, yes. Lisa. Christy, yes. And Hunt, yes. Um, we will not um, need to come back into public and we will um, scramble to 
get back in time to start the Dresden meeting at 7 p.m. Um, any questions or comments before we go? Yes, Kelly McConnell. Just don't forget everybody to copy that address that Josh gave us before you leave the meeting, otherwise you won't have it. Right. And then once we are done there, we will, we will be done. So thank you all. Um, look forward to seeing everyone at the next meeting.